Welcome to part three of how to build a stone and steel beehive stand. Now you noticed on the first hive stand, the one that we're modeling after, it's got some really expertly done stonework around the center blocks. And I'm going to do that again. And the property here has a large sandstone shelf. You know, this isn't what I would consider structural grade material, but it works fine for churching up the outside of a beehive stand. So we're going to use the jackhammer and the generator. We're going to bust this off some rocks, put them in the bucket, and we're going to go stick them on. Stick them on. We're going to stick them on. All right, we have harvested our stone. If you don't have a resource like that to get your own rocks, you can use literally anything. You could put gravel on there, you could put any type of rock you get at Lowe's or Home Depot, you could put tile on there. Whatever you could find. This is just what I have. This isn't even ideally what I would want to use, but it's free and that counts for something water, a couple mason trowels, and this is just some white masonry cement. Um, some friends of mine just built a house and they had some of this left over. This is what they used to mortar their brick together. Um, also wouldn't be my first choice of, of color. It looks okay, um, but it was free. So we spent enough money on metal we can need to skimp out a little bit if we can. So all we do for this, I just dump a bunch in my thing here. There are instructions on the bag. If you know how to read, I don't. Notice I cleaned my hole out a little bit. You wanna make sure I mean, if you're doing this the same day, it's probably pretty clean. I did this a week ago, and so I've got dirt and leaves and twigs in there. So clean that out the best you can. This looks just like flour. It doesn't taste like flour. I love flour. Um, so really just mix it up until it's like sticky. Until you can, until all the dryness is gone, basically. And there are better ways to mix this. If you have a, a drill bit with the uh, mixing auger, paddle mixer, that would work way better than this. But since this is such a small amount that I need, I didn't want to get out all those tools. I've never mixed it this way before. It is much easier with a drill and a five gallon bucket. I'm just gonna let her drink. So don't be intimidated by this step. It's probably not going to look like a professional did it, and that's okay. 
one of the cool things about using natural stone is that the asymmetry and kind of ruggedness of it all kind of is the aesthetic that I'm going for anyway. So if it doesn't look good, it's okay. This is a little wetter than I would like. And you can always add more powder if you add too much water, which is why I don't dump the whole bag in. I dump in a little at a time. If it's wetter, it's harder to stick things. Like if you back butter your, your rock or stone, if it's real liquidy, it'll try to slide. It won't set up as quickly. So there's a compromise. It's easier to mix when it's wet, but it's harder to apply. So it's best when it's like icing. All this flour and icing references are making me hungry. Okay, so this is good enough. Um, what I'm, the way I like to start is making a bed of mortar around where I'm working. So just take a scoop and lay it down. The idea is you have a nice solid surface to start your stones on and you just kind of set them into that. So I like to just go around. And make sure your stones are clean. It's a little too much. Mine are not, but I'm gonna be applying to the clean side. So there's one side that was in the dirt and one side that was not. So I like to start off with larger stones on bottom. Let's see, this guy here. Clean-ish. Put some of that back butter on there and just stick it on. Okay, next rock. Back butter. And stick it on. It's better usually when the base is kind of thick, thicker stone, and then you can use these thinner, smaller ones as you go up because the bigger stones support it. You don't want to use small thin stones on the on the base because that kind of limits your flexibility as you go up and around the cinder block. And really it's just like a puzzle that has no design, no no starting point, no no end point. And you just take the rocks and you make them fit together using the glue. Okay. So this is kind of a medium thickness rock, so we'll put it on the second layer, or level I should say. We'll just stick it right there. And just kind of twist it and turn it until it looks right. And that actually looks pretty good. Now, you notice I've got a small trowel here. You can take this and you can, what's called pointing it, where you can kind of fill the gaps. If you don't, if you don't back butter enough for it to squeeze out, you can kind of fill the fill the gaps with this little smaller trowel or if it does squeeze out and you want to clean it up you can use this and kind of scrape off the excess it also helps when you're going to the second level if you make a small bed of mortar on the stone below it like that so it makes that line defined when you do the next layer and when you get good at this, you can just slap this stuff on. Not that I know, but I've seen videos of people who are. Oh, I get a little hog wild sometimes. Okay, we're making some progress here. See how that works? Squeeze that a little bit on the bottom and take your smaller one and you kind of just clean up that line. And when it starts to dry, some of that will just kind of flake off and look halfway natural. 
Now my goal here is to come up just past the top. That one was a little too big for that spot, a little too thick. That would have been better further down. And don't be afraid to get your fingers in here. It's honestly, it's honestly easier than the tools most of the time. Not quite as clean though. Let me get a small one in here. Nope, there's the one. When you see the one, you know it. And that's gonna go right here. Oh yeah. It was meant to be. Now when you get to the top, I want to go over just a little bit. And I mentioned in video two, or part two, that I'm going to use the mortar as kind of an extension of the moat. So I'm going to make a small bed of, of material on the top, and then we're going to take small stones and stick it in, kind of like I don't know, kind of like it's crenellated a bit. That's a castle term. So, like this one, take it, we'll stick it right here. I need some on the bottom. That piece was a little dirty. That wasn't good. And then if, any more small ones like this little ridge piece. Anyway, so. I'm going to keep working. I'll bring you back around once I've get it, gotten it further along. Alright, so that's that. I know it looks a little r rough right now, but we're going to work on that. Um, so yeah, just take your time. Back buttering your pieces definitely helps. And then you could always add more pieces later. So I kind of ran low on material. So I'll need to go get some more rocks. So I just had to make do with what I had. But, you know, when you put things under a microscope, they you can kind of see their flaws. But when you step back and kind of just look at what we're doing as a whole, I think it's going to look good. So we got a couple more things to add to this. And we'll wrap it up and put some bees on it. Luke's are almost here. So I'm editing uh, the video and I just realized I didn't explain at all kind of why I was doing what I was doing and what you're about to see. So in keeping with the kind of weathered and antiquated aesthetic that I'm going for on these stands, I wanted to introduce moss. Now there's a couple ways to do that. One being you just wait and hope it grows and two, you can collect it, mix it with a cultured material such as buttermilk or, or yogurt and uh, stick it onto and apply it like paint to whatever you want to have moss. And so I'm fortunate enough to where I had some moss just out on the property and I didn't even realize it until I started looking. So there's a good chance you do too if you're interested in, in adding some, some nice color to your stands. Uh, if you don't have moss, you can order it online and they just sell just little sheets of pure moss which will probably be even better than what you find outside or maybe not, I don't know. But anyway, wanted to kind of preface what you're about to see since I failed to mention it in the video. So this is what we got. It's uh, I don't know, 
pound or so for reference of just whatever mossy looking thing I could find I tried to slough off the dirt and the bark for the most part but honestly you know there's a reason this moss grew where it was there's some nutritional value to this and I think that's this will actually help as well so so I've never done this before which is probably not surprising um, but you know it seems simple enough so you take your moss samples and you mix it with buttermilk cultured is important apparently the culture is the magic here you can also use uh, yogurt which might have been better honestly because what we're trying to come up with is a paste and then we're gonna smear it on our uh, mortar joints and cracks and crannies on the rock come on god dang it there we go and we're just gonna kind of paint it on so we're gonna mix this up that smells funny um, I was actually gonna they say you can put this in a blender or a food processor uh, and I was gonna try to swipe my wife's Herbalife drink maker blender thing so she was watching me like a hawk while I left the house so I couldn't get it so we're just gonna kind of mash this up I've been smashing it pretty good okay I was afraid it was going to be too liquidy, but this is nice and thick. I've never... Is it buttermilk supposed to be that thick? That stuff is... Smells funny. Okay, I'm going to mix this up real good. Then I've got a little chipping brush, a little chipping paintbrush that we're just going to paint this on. Honestly, a putty knife might be better. Maybe I'll find a putty knife. Okay, we're ready kind of soupy think of it like a thick gravy and it smells it smells like cheesecake makes me want my grandma's cheesecake all right we're gonna run down and smear it on All right, so you can see over here we have the mud and buttermilk and moss, mud, milk, and moss, whatever, um, conglomeration smeared on the seams and the cracks. It, I may have to jump over this because of the wind. It already makes it look better just getting some of that bright white uh, mortar toned down a little bit. I just kind of smeared that mud mixture all over all the cracks that way it kind of doesn't look as new and that's what we're trying to accomplish we're trying to make this look a little older a little more settled in now that that's done we'll go ahead and backfill some of those dirt piles make it look like those stones are coming right out of the ground and next we will move to the moat material lots of M's today mineral oil you can use motor oil used motor oil or, or whatever um, and I've used that successfully, but it kind of doesn't go with the natural theme we're going for. And this is, you know, as you can see, made for ingestion, which means it's not bad for the environment, I think. And bees aren't supposed to like it, so we'll add that now. To the moat. I'm supposed to get it in the moat, I think. how it works so hopefully that will stay full I won't top it all the way off yet I want to monitor monitor that and make sure that it doesn't leak and it shouldn't and I know it kind of looks it kind of looks gross right now with the mud and the weird mortar everywhere but let it settle in it will look good I promise all right to finish this off 
we're going to put a coat of truck bed coating, kind of like bed liner spray, on the tops of these. If you've ever bee kept before, you know that sometimes when you're going to pry on those boxes, they can slide and shift around a little bit. This will give it a little bit of texture, a little bit of grip. Um, the finish is kind of like a, well, a bed liner. It's kind of a sandpapery type feel. It should keep them from sliding. And uh, we'll go and spray this on, give it some time to dry, and then we'll be ready to move the hives over. All right, how do you get in the truck because it's so windy? Um, so that's pretty much it. You might be asking yourself, where do you go from here? Well, there's a few other things that I'll probably add on as we go. Now, we haven't used these yet. These are you know, projects we've done over the winter looking to get started here in the next couple weeks. Um, I might add a couple uh, strap hooks because we don't use the, the rock on top method. We like to use ratchet straps for each hive. Um, plenty of anchor points, so we might uh, Set up a couple D-rings, which you can weld on or bolt on. Um, you know, the the three-inch square tube underneath, there's good little nooks and crannies there where you can set your hive tool. You could put on a little hook to where you can uh, hang your smoker. You know, the opportunities are endless, just like with anything. Uh, the take-home message here is that you don't have to spend a ton of money, and you don't have to put a pallet in the grass or cinder blocks in the grass and just set your beehives on the ground. Now I know that that's, it's cheap, it's easy, it works. Um, but if you're like a hobby beekeeper, that's probably not what you want. Now commercial guys, yeah, I get it. You know, you need, you need effective, you need efficient and, and a pallet on the ground, it, you know, it, it checks those boxes. But if you just want a couple hives and you want them to look nice and you want to kind of enjoy looking at your bees like we do, then you know spend a little bit extra money so all in i think that we spent less than 200 bucks 200 dollars max and we spent a couple days um and that seems like a lot of money for a stand but remember you can fit six hives on this thing so what does that come out to less than 35 bucks per hive and really that's not bad and if you just need a couple hives you can make it smaller granted you don't save as much the the, the cost per hive for the stand like this it goes up the, the uh, smaller you make it because the, the cost is really in the metal and you know it doesn't cost a whole lot more to, to widen it so um, anyway if you have any questions comments suggestions uh, please let us know and uh, just for future reference we're doing segments of this property as uh, different themes so we'll be coming out with some some new and neat style hives for each little section of property out here so We'll may, we may do a couple more of these and then we'll kind of change it to something different. Um, a little spoiler alert here. Let's see if I can turn this camera around. But I can't. So that's a, that funky little contraption. I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. I don't know if I like it or not. But I've got some of those limestone uh, pillars that we can make some neat stuff out of too. So we'll see how it goes. Anyway, thanks for watching.